So, returning to Lord Runner's Rescue. This level is all about jumping. And it includes some unpleasant tricks with these, uh, I don't, I still don't know what to call those. Droopy, droopy spots? Um, obviously this section in the middle can't all be gotten from the same, I don't know, alignment? Uh, and <clears throat> to get off this series of, uh, get off the high walls, you have to step down um, to a place where you can't get back from. So there's this curious thing where um, you kind of have to go, you have, the, the droopy things kind of help you. They teach you to go down into the pits on the edge, which in turn give you access to these keys on the flat bits. And from these stepping stones, you can, of course, get the other keys. This is one of the levels where you have to, um, where it's best, I don't know, where they, they kind of uh, expect you to assume symmetry. Um, the visible spots, these, these visible spots next to the high walls have analogs on the backside and if you don't know they're there it gets kind of confusing and difficult but uh, by now you probably should have a sense of the game often gives you a mirror image or a theme and this is clearly a mirror image level or you know you can experiment and die a few times before you figure it out that works too This is another swimming level, so be careful about your ears. And... The mushroom, I think, is kind of important here. I think it's necessary... Oop, oh, I missed it. I think it's necessary to get a number of... Um... Keys. For example, I think it's necessary to jump over here. And I think this one can be difficult to get to um, because there's some grouping locations. But uh, you can also get to it by jumping towards the back, towards the upper right from here. I think the islands on the left are simple. Oop, I missed my target. Well, they're simple if you... I assume that the um, current always be upper right. Okay, so now all we've got left is the one in the fourth space. And uh, the ones on top of the lighthouse. I don't think I've ever gotten that one that way before. I've always done it after the mushroom expired. Uh, stupid. Elevator. This one is, um, again, a puzzle one, primarily. Uh, the flavor is a bit different, though. 
Uh, it's mostly, how do you jump up? Like, for example, if I want to get this key right here, and I jump to the upper left, I, of course, miss. So the right way to do it is to jump up here where there's a too long one, and then get this one. That one's easy. Um, some of them are also, the, some of the others are also somewhat easy. That one's pretty straightforward. Uh, this one, I think I jump. That's interesting. So I can jump one forward if the one too forward is more than too high. I may have known that like once upon a time, but there's obviously some leaps of faith here. Um... Now, how do you get up here? It's too high. So what you need to do is jump over to this structure, which is a little bit higher. Um, this one, this little area, you can't jump up on at all, but of course there's this convenient stepping stone. Uh, with the mushroom, we can jump to the neighbor. I don't think there's a safe way to get down with the mushroom. Oh, yeah, there is. Uh, let me, let's figure, let's, let's show it. There we go. Uh, getting the cat on this level is, of course, tedious. It's, it's an open level. Oops! I think I knew that was not co not a reasonable jump. I've just, well, I made a mistake. Uh, okay, one one thing I like about this level is it's very clear that all of those little puzzles are freestanding. They are not interlocked. Some of them really, you know, like they don't all touch, but you can kind of fairly easily tell which are unrelated and figure them out independently. They're like bite-size puzzles for the relatively new player. This spot here is sort of a red herring. You might, you could spend a while trying to jump up and not getting anywhere. Um, here, these little flanges are red herrings. Of course, what you need to do is jump up on this little shelf, give yourself a jump of two, and then you have all these. I think the remainder are all mushroom required. Uh, I'm not certain about that. I'm just going on memory. Um, so if we get on this mushroom and jump up here, oh, right, and then we jump again and we'll end up on the far one. And then we end up on these keys. This one is more straightforward. And then of course, there are a variety of ways to land on this platform, but that's the one I like. You do need a mushroom for it. it that uh, lower step is just a red herring. Okay, so what do we have here? This is, I think, maybe the first of the perspective mind fucks. Uh, to part of my French. So, like, obviously, uh, or maybe not so obvious. There's a big staircase here going towards the camera, so you can't see it. Um, I don't know. Maybe mind fuck is too strong a term, but it's. Obviously, there's like some trick there. Uh, the rest of it is fairly straightforward, perspective-wise. But there are many um, droopy spots. This is not a forgiving level in terms of making bad jumps. If you jump in a direction that 
is not the right height, you die. Uh, and the design ethos here is you can you, you should be able to see it. You should be able to see that. Oop. Yeah, there's one of the. Uh, like, so for example, if I jump towards the back here, I would go over the edge and fall a long way and die. So if I try that, I just get instant death. And I didn't because I've done this before. There are a significant number of those um, uh, saggy locations, like this one, which I think is, you know, pretty reasonable because, I don't know, reasonable? It, it seems necessary because otherwise this level would be far too much of just doing the same thing over and over. I'm pretty sure there's a sag right, right, right here. Oh, no. It just felt like it because it was an unnecessary block. Can't go that way. One thing about this game that's not apparent by watching it is that um, jumping is not, for the most part, pressing in a direction and pressing the button. Usually, you press the button and then choose the direction. And having the button held down forces the jump. Um, which makes it pretty easy to do exactly what you mean to. Which for this kind of exacting, you know, never touch the wrong square design, is pretty essential. So I guess I feel like, good job. Hooray for, I forget the author of this game. It is definitely not the author of Loadrunner. Just FYI. So this one is called Trap the Guards, and it's a little oversold, the name, because you don't actually trap them, but you do kind of get them to go places that are not near the keys you want to get. So it's more like out maneuver the guards. Um, the maze on the whoop, the maze on the east, and the little um, I don't know cubby hole on the west, or should I say the maze on the lower right, and the cubby hole on the upper left, are pretty effective at well. They're useful to get the guards to spend a little bit of time catching up with you. So if I hang out right here, they're all willing to go into that nook. Which gives me quite a bit more time when I go over to the opposite maze. Although not really enough time to clear out this maze because it's a, it's a maze. <laughs> so there's backtracking to be had and eventually they will come in and I will have to jump them. Whoop. That was a close one. But you can see they take a little while to get out of the maze, which is handy for clearing some of the s sketchier keys. Oh, I made a mistake of leaving the cat to the end because there are many end squares. There's no way I'm going to reliably catch it. It would have to help me by running off towards the dead end. And the positions aren't, aren't quite right. So, that level's fairly straightforward, kind of more like arcadey. Oh, here's the start of the trend of building levels such that there are some words that appear initially that have no effect upon the design. <clears throat> this one is mostly a challenge of getting to the top. 
Though I like to get, I probably, oh, it makes sense to get this one now because I'm there. And I'm going to try going up. Eventually I'll make a mistake. And when I do, well, if I make a mistake, then I'll go to the bottom and do the bottom, the keys at the bottom. If I don't, that's fine too. And to the south. Oh, it's inter it's, it's useful to note she will not walk off heights that will damage her. So if you. If you um, push her against a, a cliff or a three height or more, she will bulk and not proceed. Which is actually very helpful. Okay, so the way to get the ones on the far, you have to go over the... You have to go up to the top. Oops, that's one of the many mistakes. Well, that one's a little unfair. I do not know what's using all my CPU. But whatever it is, it stopped. There are little uh, stairs in the nooks of the S and the J. I assume JS is the initials of whoever made the level, but I don't know that. Um, oh, well, whatever. get this one probably let the mushroom run out okay and I don't remember whether I need a mushroom to get over the river or, no, it's just a straight up jump. Oof. That was at one of those scenarios where I knew exactly what I wanted to do but I was having trouble getting the joystick to do it. Okay. Oh. Okay, and the way to get over there... I think I need a mushroom. Because it's a too wide river at every point. Oh, and I need to let the mushroom expire at that point. And jump to the lower left. There we go. Okay, now all I have to do is climb all the way back up again. Which 
does not require mushrooms. And although uh, she will refuse to jump off cliffs, she will not refuse to jump in the water when... Walk into the water, rather, when you're trying to position yourself. Okay, this one is a little... It's a little obnoxious because it has 777 keys. Basically every surface has a key on it. Um, if you're mostly about completion without having to continue, as in finishing in one, in one game with no game overs, this level is sort of a boon, you know, each key is worth points, and I'm racking them up, as you may notice. I'm afraid this guy's going to come down. There he is. And as a result, I'm leaving and getting keys elsewhere. So there's one extra life. There are some... This isn't just randomly run around and collect keys, although that is, it's, it's a bit of a time sink because of all the key collecting you have to do. There are some jumps to figure out. For example, you may have noticed the jump I had to do to get out of the very first area. And then you have to spot the way to get out of this area as well. Although, the guard helps you with that one. He'll happily walk down and point out where you can get in. Of course, this is definitely- this is much more of a trap of the guards level than the one called trap the guards. You can convince him to go, like, I don't even know if he knows how to get out of that space because you cannot jump from against the wall. You must be one away from the wall. I'll try it again. You must be one away from the wall to make that jump successfully to escape that area the guard is in now. So I may have a carefree experience finishing this and I'm definitely going to spend my time doing this large area up top because that's the one that always ends up being tedious to me dodging him over and over it seems like you would get a really high bonus here but because you're, there's always a few lingering and your bonus goes up when you collect keys and goes down when... All the time, really, but, you know, effectively goes down when you're not collecting keys. Then that result is, I always seem to get a pretty mediocre bonus on this level. Of course, overall, still plenty of points, but... And screensaver. I need to fix that. Also the, um, of course, color scheme with purple on cyan. I mean, it doesn't really look much like cyan here, but that is the official Commodore 64 name for that color. If I remember correctly, I think it's like number two. I don't know, it might look different against blue or something, but... Here it looks more like a turquoise. Uh, maybe that's not the right name either. Whatever. It doesn't have enough green in it for me for it to be cyan. But anyway, 
Purple on cyan is not the best contrast in my book. So I tend to end up looking more for the flash. How are we doing? 105 keys left. I feel like I'm missing some. Like, they must, I don't know. It just seems doubtful that I can get 105 keys out of what's left in the lower right. the trick here that doesn't seem right I guess here nope and I let the guard out okay well you know I think that it's just simple yeah that's it jump from one back into the notch I actually don't know how to get out of this area, so I think it's essential that it be done last. And look at that, my bonus is at zero. Maybe it's because I died. Usually the guard kills me once or twice in this area. So I am a few short. Where are they? Oh! There's some along the edge here. That was at least two of them. Yep, it was all of them. Okay. Lesson learned. Oop. Be more diligent about... Uh, when, when handling that, doing the jump to the uh, platforms there. Be more diligent about getting the ones beneath them. This one is refreshingly straightforward. Um, this is quite like the small fort at the beginning of the game, level three. All we have to do is go into these uh, rooms and pick up the keys. There's one guard chasing us on, whoa, on each side of the fort. Could you just, uh, there we go. And then, and then afterwards, I run right into him. The keys are all on little ledges. Um, the ledges have no game purpose, I, other than maybe making it more obvious that you've collected a bunch of keys. These walls are four or five high something. There's definitely no jumping up on them.
That was surprisingly easy.